Hi guys, I'm Christina, the hygienist slash host of this YouTube channel. And today I'm gonna to be comparing the Crest 3D White Brilliance Toothpaste to the Ollie Clean Mint Toothpaste. Now these two toothpastes are actually pretty comparable with a couple of key differences, which I will discuss, which may help you make a decision on your next toothpaste purchase. Let's talk about it. Okay, so let's start with the Crest 3D White Brilliance Toothpaste. I don't know if you guys can see that here. Now this is a whitening toothpaste, which helps remove stains and potentially make your teeth appear lighter. Now I'm using all this language like potentially in quotation marks because one thing you need to understand about whitening toothpaste is that typically whitening toothpaste don't actually contain any whitening ingredients. Now really quick, I say typically because they did start coming out with some toothpaste that do include whitening ingredients. For example, this Crest Brilliance with 4% hydrogen peroxide, but that is for another video. In the meantime, general rule of thumb for whitening toothpastes is that they're just more abrasive than non-whitening toothpaste and can remove surface stains off of your teeth if you have them. Not teeth, if you have stains. I guess if you have teeth as well. <laughs> Of course, the danger with whitening toothpastes, which are more abrasive, is that with long-term use, you could potentially cause damage to the enamel and definitely cause damage to dentin, which is the second or sub-layer of your tooth, which is a lot softer than enamel. So just be aware, if you're trying to change the color of your teeth and actually whiten them, a uh, whitening toothpaste is not the best way to go. Anyway, this Crest 3D White Brilliance Toothpaste costs anywhere from six to nine dollars depending on where you buy it or if you buy it in bulk. The toothpaste does contain fluoride, which I am not a huge fan of, which I know is crazy coming from a hygienist. But if you want more information on my reasoning, I'll leave a link in the description um, below to a video that I made on that. But the toothpaste also contains a couple of other inactive ingredients, some of which I'm not a fan of, like SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate, which is uh, what causes the toothpaste to foam up, but it's known to cause gum irritation and irritation to soft tissues. And the toothpaste also contains titanium dioxide, which is technically not harmful in a toothpaste because you're spitting it out, but it is known to contribute to cancer in powder form if it's inhaled. So I say if the only purpose of the titanium dioxide is to just make the product appear whiter, why? Especially if we know that it can be harmful in different forms. But anyway, there's that. The other thing I want to mention is the abrasiveness factor, which I kind of touched base on already. So there's actually a scale of zero to 200 or and beyond uh, called the RDA value, which stands for relative dentin abrasiveness value. Every toothpaste has this score and generally the higher the number, the more abrasive the toothpaste is. So most sources say that Crest 3D White toothpaste has a score of about 200. I say about because Crest actually has a whole line of 3D toothpastes and they vary in RDA value slightly. But anyway, I did actually contact Crest to ask for specific numbers and they kind of gave me a baloney answer, something vague along the lines of, it's under 250 RDA, which every toothpaste under 250 RDA is considered safe for daily use. And you shouldn't even use the RDA value to determine the safety of a toothpaste. Plus it's very hard to determine the actual RDA value of a toothpaste. Well, if that's the case, then how do you even know your toothpaste is under 250 RDA, right? And there are actually studies that show that the more abrasive a toothpaste is, the more surface damage it causes. And honestly, even from personal experience with years of using whitening toothpaste before I knew better as a teen, I definitely scratched up my enamel. It's actually kind of a vicious cycle if you think about it. You're using the abrasive toothpaste to remove surface stains, but it's causing more scratches and imperfections in your enamel which are a perfect spot for a future stain to collect. So you remove stain, cause more scratches, which collect more stain, then you need to remove it more, cause more scratches, etc. Anyway, suffice it to say, the Crest 3D line of toothpaste is quite abrasive. Now, does it work? I mean, yeah, I'm sure it does. I personally haven't used Crest in a while, like probably over a decade. I lie, I actually recently did a, an experiment using Crest toothpaste. It did not go well, but that's, another video. But I would imagine at this level of abrasiveness, the toothpaste will remove surface stains and make your teeth appear whiter. It also has an ingredient called PVP or polyvinyl pyrrolidone, basically a synthetic polymer that coats your enamel to prevent future stains from adhering to the teeth. It's considered safe today 
I hate sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but honestly, one thing I am more and more inclined to believe and understand the more research I do about stuff is that anything synthetic or man-made has its drawbacks, some things more than others. So ultimately, I prefer to steer towards natural, neutral ingredients. Bottom line, would I use this toothpaste? No. Certainly not as a regular daily toothpaste and not really even for whitening purposes. If I really cared to make my teeth look whiter, I would look into things like whitening strips or gels which contain actual whitening ingredients, but I don't actually care to whiten my teeth, so no thanks on this toothpaste. Okay, let's move on to the Ollie Clean Mint toothpaste. So this toothpaste costs $13.95 for one tube, which you may notice right away is a bit more expensive than the Crest toothpaste. This is mostly because the Ollie toothpaste contains an ingredient called hydroxyapatite, which is more expensive than fluoride. It's a non-toxic alternative to fluoride, which helps to remineralize enamel and even repair enamel on a microscopic level. Not only is it a safe and effective alternative to fluoride, it also replaces the need for PVP because it repairs repairs those microscopic scratches and imperfections on the enamel, thereby reducing the amount of future stains that can collect on teeth. So double win there. Now a small note on hydroxyapatite in toothpastes. This ingredient is definitely on the rise in oral care products, but there's a very specific concentration and particle size necessary for hydroxyapatite to be effective. Unfortunately, a lot of toothpaste brands out there right now don't follow the science, but Ollie does use the correct particle size and concentration, namely nano size particles at a concentration of 10%. If you guys want more information on hydroxyapatite, especially how it compares to fluoride, and how to determine whether or not your hydroxyapatite toothpaste is effective. I'll leave another link in the description below to a video I made on that. But anyway, so this toothpaste is $13.95 for a tube. It does not contain fluoride, nor does it contain SLS, PVP, titanium dioxide, any artificial colors or flavors. In fact, it has some great ingredients like xylitol, which is a sweetener derived from birch trees that helps to protect against cavities, as well as potassium gluconate, which helps with sensitivity. Now, in terms of the RDA value, in comparison to the Crest 3D white toothpaste, the Ollie Clean Mint toothpaste has an RDA value of 143, which is still pretty high up there, but definitely less than the Crest toothpaste. So again, I would consider this to be a whitening toothpaste, not something to be used on a regular basis. Although because it does contain the nanohydroxyapatite, which helps to repair enamel on a microscopic level, you may not actually experience that damage that typical whitening toothpastes have because of their abrasiveness. The other and final thing I want to mention about the Ollie toothpaste is the foaminess factor. As far as cleaner, more natural toothpaste go, this toothpaste does still foam up pretty Pretty much like a traditional toothpaste. They do use a coconut based surfactant to achieve this instead of the irritating SLS, but I mention this in general because I'm personally used to virtually non-foaming toothpaste, and so it felt a little bit weird to me, but I do know that most people are actually the opposite. For example, my husband tried the toothpaste that I usually use and he was not excited about it but he really enjoyed the Ollie toothpaste. So anyway, just a heads up on that. Basically, if you guys are looking for a cleaner whitening alternative toothpaste that still feels like a traditional toothpaste and has the benefit of hydroxyapatite, I would say Ollie Clean Mint is the way to go. You can also visit the Ollie website and just order a toothpaste there. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. Just a heads up, they do have another flavor toothpaste called the Fresh Mint, not Clean Mint. This is an entirely different toothpaste with very different ingredients, not what I reviewed in this video, so just make sure to pick the clean mint if you want to try the toothpaste that I talked about in this video. All right, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care of your teeth.